So, all right, so let's start. Uh, hi, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Rajneesh Bharadwaj. I work as a Linux kernel engineer for AMD. And today I and my colleagues, uh, Mr. Felix Kewling, uh, who is also our technical lead for Linux compute kernel team at AMD, and David Yatsin, uh, who is also a Linux kernel engineer, and uh, we work together on this project. We'll be talking about some work that we are doing with Creu uh, over the last few months. So <clears throat> before we uh, talk about device files and Creu and its limitations, I think uh, I would like to pause here for a second and just mention that uh, we are using this Creu tool for few last few months now, and our experience with Creu and the community has been extremely pleasing and and very uh, uh, satisfactory. And uh, but like any any other software, you know, Creu also has its own limitations. Uh, for example, it's an ability to checkpoint and restore any process that has device files associated with it. Uh, but strictly speaking, um, it's not necessarily a Creu's limitation. Uh, basically, there is no real way for Creu to know, um, you know, the device internal state, or for example, for a complex device like a GPU, uh, there is no way Creu can know uh, without external help from a driver or or any uh, user mode support plugin uh, that can tell where the you know, various virtual uh, GPU mappings are and where the buffer objects, how are they created, how are they mapped, uh, user mode queues, etc. cetera. So um, fortunately, uh, Creu provides an extensible mechanism to extend Creu where Creu cannot deal with such things. Uh, and uh, one such mechanism is a shared object mechanism uh, of Creu plugins, uh, basically. And, and that's what we used for uh, uh, enabling our work for checkpointing and restoring uh, AMD GPU device based processes with Creo. Uh, with current work, basically we are able to checkpoint and restore compute workloads like PyTorch uh, and TensorFlow. And we are going to talk about uh, in subsequent slides about what we changed to Creo and how we edit the support using the plugin. So um, ROCM is AMD's proprietary uh, open source developer platform for uh, GPU compute. And to enable ROCM with Creu, we had to basically make uh, changes or our work was split into three major chunks. Uh, portion of it went to the Creu itself where we introduced some new uh, hooks to the Creu. We are basically proposing these Creus at the moment when we are talking and our discussion with the community is currently under review uh, as a pull request mentioned here. Um, then um, we implemented the actual plugin which basically in, acts as an interface between uh, AMD GPU driver and the Creu and basically arbitrates the checkpoint and restore process. Uh, this is, we are also planning to distribute as, as it as part of Creu. And right now this is uh, under review and, and to make all this happen at the driver level, we also had to make changes to our AMD GPU, AMD KFD driver. Uh, and currently our patches are uh, under review. We have done some API changes and these patches are currently under review and also available on our GitHub page for anybody to take a look at. So this is the typical workflow basically, and this is how Creu checkpoints and resource a process. So uh, AMD GPU plugin becomes a part of Creu using the plugin extended mechanism. And uh, you can see that we have the, on, on the hardware side, we have a G, like we have a cluster of GPUs here. Um, and in the kernel mode driver, AMD GPU driver, we have this ROG driver, which is a subset of AMD GPU driver and basically uh, also known as AMD KFD. And this is uh, the primary interface between compute applications and a graphics hardware. So um, when Crew starts checkpointing, it attaches to a process using ptrace standard mechanism and, and and it tries to you know drain all the metadata and the memory contents uh, of a target process that it wants to seize and checkpoint and how it does is basically by injecting a parasite code and this parasite code uh, helps to deal with the various vmas and the memory regions using remote procedure calls and once all that is done um, uh, the image files are written to disk. So we have extended Creu by supporting it with AMD GPU plugin that basically assists in the exact same process. And uh, what it does is extra is when we are trying to checkpoint an application, 
the crew calls back to the plugin hooks that we are implementing. And these hooks uh, make call to the kernel mode driver and fetch the information like topology, various device groups, virtual memory mappings, uh, shared virtual memory ranges and user mode queues and whatnot. And it feeds back this information back to the plugin, which basically uh, save all this as part of a uh, image file. Um, so we are also creating some extra image files in addition to the image files that Crew already creates. Um, and finally, when all this is done, this image is ready and, and this is uh, you know ready for migration, maybe to restore on a same or a different node or do whatever with this. So this basically contains the whole package. So this workflow is, is exactly the same uh, workflow of a typical crew checkpoint operation. So um, <clears throat> talking about AMD GPU plugin, so AMD GPU plugin basically supports various device files. Uh, like I said earlier, dev KFD is nothing but the interface or the IOCTEL API for the, uh, the KFD driver, which handles all the compute part and, and, and several render nodes. So on a four GPU system, you will see four such nodes available. Right now, most of the KFD process state is associated um, uh, during checkpoint and restore with dev KFD. And we are doing very little operation for each of these render nodes except that we are saving some metadata. However, it could be extended in future for supporting uh, some other things like uh, you know, Mesa video decode and encode. Uh, so the way it drains the GPU uh, from uh, this, these, these APIs is basically we call into these IOCTELs and we copy the metadata and the VRAM contents uh, like various buffer objects, various type of buffer objects, we discover them and we copy them using the STM engines. Um, we'll talk about uh, various VRAM copy mechanisms in a subsequent slide and that we experimented with, but uh, the de facto uh, choice is SDMA standard now, uh, SDMA engine, and it makes it extremely fast. We support multiple GPUs. And at this point of time, we only support Rockem compute applications. We do not support Vulkan compute, uh, any graphics OpenGL application, or like I said, Mesa video decode and encode at this point of time. And finally, uh, we are saving all these and uh, Im uh, images, and we are adhering to Google protobuf uh, format, uh, exactly what a crew does, and uh, we save these image files. However, we do see some limitations and um, uh, regarding Google protobuf's inability to deal with larger buffer objects, and we would like to discuss here uh, with the community, we have a separate file uh, for this. So uh, AMD GPU plugin uh, basically implements uh, some hooks here. Some of them exist in Crew, like dump external file and restore external file. Uh, and some of them do not. And we are proposing and requesting the, uh, the Crew maintainers to you know, uh, make them a part of uh, Crew, uh, Crew itself, because when we were developing this, we realized that uh, not everything for complex devices such as the GPU is possible uh, to be done in these two existing plugin hooks for external file dumping and external file restoring. Uh, we will discuss about each one of them in detail, but on a higher level, uh, you know, dump external file exists. It saves all the KFD process state and VRAM content for the process. Uh, restore external files runs on the restore stage, does the reverse operation, basically recreates the whole process and VRAM contents as they were before. Um, we have update VMA map, which is used to restore memory mappings um, for the buffer objects that are recreated in the memory and the new file paths if the restore is happening on a different node. Uh, resume device late is a special, um, uh, has, a, has a special uh, reason behind it because um, and we'll talk about it in, in a slide in detail, but it's used to basically restart the user mode queues, uh, MMB notifiers, and restores the shared virtual memory ranges, and basically makes the process ready to run in almost the last and final stages of crew restore. And um, to make all this happen, and especially to make checkpoint work, we had to add this handle device VMA uh, new hook, uh, basically to detect uh, any unsuitable mapping and make crew understand that this mapping may not be a regular file mapping or VMA mapping, but there is something that can deal with such things. So let's look at these in detail. Uh, but before we go there, I think I should also quickly introduce to the new IOCTELs that 
we are uh, using in our uh, kernel mode driver. They are all currently under review and they are all um, basically uh, used in conjunction with several plugin hook calls that we saw in the previous slide. Uh, first three, crew pause, crew process info, and crew dumper are called uh, in a separate context where the crew master checkpoint process is is p trace p trace attached and basically um, it has hijacked the process and the octals are uh, called from not arbitrary but a known p trace attached crew context. So our kernel mode driver knows that this is coming from a p trace attached context and thus it allows them to proceed. Um, so for pause IOCTL, uh, basically uh, when we start the checkpoint operation, we would like to ensure that uh, the the state, the if, if there are some uh, user mode queues running on the GPU, uh, they should be evicted or at least uh, we need to make sure that the state is consistent between the checkpoint and restore. So we make sure that any running activity on the work, on the GPU is is paused or quazed for some, some time while this checkpoint operation is going on. Uh, and this can also unpause, like crew pause can do stop and resume both. Uh, process info basically um, is sort of a helper IOCTL. It runs before the actual dumper uh, uh, IOCTL and it determines the information. It discovers the under, underlying KFD or a GPU process, like what various types of buffer obje objects are there and how much size do they have and how much memory is needed to be allocated in the user space to drain all the content. So basically it does the discovery. And then we have the queue dumper IOCTL, which uh, finally uh, like extracts the information, the actual raw data content from these discovered objects and, and relays them back to the user space plugin, which then saves them uh, in an image file. Crew restorer um, IOCTL is run from a slightly different context. Basically, uh, it's the target process uh, which crew is morphing themselves into. Uh, so uh, this is a slightly different context and, and this is called in the context of the, the resuming task itself. And it basically does the reverse operation of what all the checkpointing did, tries to restore the buffer objects, every content, all the contents, all the metadata, make sure that every state is sort of recreated but not necessarily fully restored at this stage. And why? Because uh, for a GPU uh, we, we, or, or any complex device, right? We might have uh, some memory notifiers or we might have some operations that need to be delayed until the VMAs are in their final positions. Basically, um, you know, to, to sanely restart the memory notifiers and restoring the shared virtual memory ranges, uh, the, the virtual memory areas within the newly process, uh, newly created process address space have to be finalized. And that means that the PIC code uh, had to be, uh, you know, unmapped and, 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 and not overlap with any one of these existing VM ranges. So this crew resume uh, IOCTL is basically called from a separate context again, uh, from a crew remote context. And this is called for each resuming task. And um, yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about it in, in the next slide where we talk about the, the plugin that calls this IOCTL. And they are also, um, all of these are, are uh, basically validated in the kernel mode with the right uh, security privileges and capabilities. So KFD does that. So uh, these are the plugin hooks uh, that I was talking about. So the first plugin hook that we introduced to make the checkpoint work is, is handle device VMA hook. Um, it takes a file descriptor and a pointer to a, a struct stat, basically. Um, so why we need this? Uh, we need this because currently crew does not handle any VMA that it encounters that has any um, device file mappings with it. So basically uh, the way crew works so here is this, it, it looks at the processes proc PIDS maps and proc PID maps files and looks at certain flags. And if those flags have a physical function or, or IO attributes set, they are not treated as regular VMAs by Creo. So this plugin basically gives a chance uh, uh, to any registered uh, plugin hook to identify themselves and associate themselves with any such VMA that might have belonged to their device or 
basically the driver can claim that hey this is mine so this is the uh, plugin basically that discovers availability of any such plugin hook first of all if it if nothing exists then you simply fails to checkpoint such a process but if if certain plugin exists like ours um, then uh, then few does not fail and and basically it only saves the metadata about these vmas and expects that the plugin will take care of the rest of the checkpointing and restoring operation for such processes that has such vmas The other uh, plugin hook that we are proposing is called update VMA map. Um, and this is needed on the restore uh, phase, basically. Uh, because uh, on the restore, we cannot guarantee that the, the buffer object that we are trying to create again in the graphics memory um, will be at the same old offset as it was before. Uh, because there are some sort of a, a uh, yeah, they, they can be overlap or that same offset can be now occupied by some uh, other process uh, claiming that uh, offset. So there is no guarantee. So we need to tell Crew before Crew does, because Crew pre maps all these VMAs uh, in, the, in the position independent code uh, in the sysm map phase. So when Crew maps such a uh, newly created uh, VMA, then it will fail unless we update it with the new valid offset because the previously saved offset may or may not be valid. So that's just an assumption and we can rely on that. So uh, we need to update Crew uh, with the latest and the right uh, offset within the device file for that VMA that it's trying to M map. And hence we need this plugin to be run um, in the PIC system map phase uh, for all the VMAs that have VMA unsupported flag set. So uh, it also updates Crew with the new um, uh, file uh, path. Yeah. Because on the restore, we may restore on a completely different node and the file path may not be the same. So it does these two things before Crew M maps the VMAs in the restore phase. And finally, we have this uh, resume devices late hook. Uh, which is sort of special um, because this does some uh, special functionality um, which was not possible uh, in the restore phase so this is called at a very late stage um, almost the end of a restore phase here uh, i should say and this is called for each resuming task so crew basically so the way we have we are proposing or modifying crew is to call this plugin hook for every resuming task and uh, the and 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 the plugin that responds to uh, uh, this uh, hook uh, has the responsibility of validating this process ID, and the way we we do that is in the kernel mode. So kernel mode driver KFD, uh, since it's called from an uh, from a remote crew context, uh, so the the KFD does not have the right uh, uh, mm struct to fetch. Uh, the, the required information whether this resuming task is indeed a crew uh, indeed sorry is is indeed a kfd process so that's all done in our kernel mode driver so this calls the, the resume later ioctl that we just talked uh, about earlier and um, and basically uh, why we need is uh, we cannot start the mme notifiers uh, until and unless all the pmas are finally restored in their appropriate locations uh, within the uh, address space of the restored process. So this can only happen at a very late stage. Hence, this needs to be done uh, when all the tasks are almost ready to run. Um, but we have no reliable way to figure out that which task is uh, required to run such a plugin. So we regardless call it for all of them and leave the responsibility at each hook implementing this uh, to validate the incoming target process ID and if it matches a target device process, then it takes care of, it's expected to take care of the required op operations in the kernel mode. So that's about it. Uh, talking about VRAM copy methods. Um, so uh, over the time, over the last few months, while we were experimenting with this, um, we tried several techniques. Uh, initially, we tried uh, proc PID mem approach uh, to read the VRAM contents uh, when we are checkpointing. Uh, basically, we read the uh, VRAM offsets 
uh, within the proc PID mem file at an offset that is nothing but the start of the uh, the virtual address uh, that we are trying to read for the VMA. So this approach is very reliable, but it's extremely slow. I mean, it, it takes several minutes to checkpoint, uh, even small amount of uh, VRAM contents, let's say less than few few megabytes, few hundred megabytes, it takes few minutes. So it is reliable and it's always available, but it's very slow because it's uh, interfaced through the PCI host data path. Uh, and there are several bottlenecks here. Um, there were several optimizations available on top of it. Um, so we tried uh, direct MMAP on large bar GPUs, which was slightly faster than PROC PIDMM, um, but it's not always available because it assumes that, uh, not it, it doesn't assume, but it, it expects that the, the PCI bar has to be a large bar configuration for this to work effectively. Then finally, uh, we 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 uh, we are now using SDM interface, which is is always available. It's extremely fast and reliable, uh, but the only downside is that it depends on two external uh, libraries. So we have to uh, use libdrm and libdrm AMD GPU uh, because we are exporting uh, the the buffer objects and using the standard uh, Linux DMA buff technique uh, to uh, copy the the VRAM contents. And since we are going through the libdrm interface, uh, that's sort of a dependency for STMA. But with this, the operations are extremely fast and we are able to uh, basically checkpoint a few gigabytes of uh, VRAM within seconds. Um, we have uh, thought about some security concerns and threats and, and possible mitigation plans. Um, so my, my colleague and, and, uh, and our architect Felix had uh, chalked out several detailed plans on uh, basically, uh, and, and we wanted to discuss this uh, with the community here uh, as well. So we want to ensure that the read access um, to remote process state and, and the control uh, of remote process execution should be sane and uh, hardware access to privileged state uh, should be avoided and, and it should be tightly controlled. It should be only available to the valid resuming task. Uh, but primarily we are relying on um, the security policies that Ptrace system call inter, uh, implements uh, uh, based on its you know, attributes within the kernel um, uh, for the checkpoint and for restore, uh, especially uh, when we're restoring without, uh, when we are restoring uh, within a Docker or Podman container, uh, we are relying on, on sysadmin capabilities uh, and, and certain root privileges uh, that are associated to effectively uh, uh, run the task. Um, then um, we also have some concerns about uh, image integrity. So let's say for example, uh, the checkpointed image for a KFT process is tempered with, uh, and on the restore, if somebody, you know, tries to alter the GPU state using some modified uh, uh, instructions there, uh, how do we rely on image integrity? Can we only rely on uh, the root capabilities or is, kit, uh, is sysadmin capability a reasonable long-term uh, requirement? Can we safely assume that? So these are the points that we would like to uh, basically uh, seek feed, feedback on. Uh, but yeah, let me pause here for a moment and and, and request Felix if he has any further comments to make here. Sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so like Rajni said, I think we're fairly certain that, that our approach to using ptrace is pretty sound. So ptrace already has uh, checks in place to allow uh, access to remote processes. And so we're uh, basically extending that. And so if a process has ptrace access to a target process, then we're also allowing access to the GPU associated data for that process and otherwise we don't. Um, the The biggest concern for us is um, basically when we're restoring an image and we're getting uh, the image data from a root privileged CRIO process, uh, is that enough to, to rely on the integrity of the image that we're getting or uh, is there a chance that the image could have been tampered with and, and the root CRIO process just kind of takes the image and then passes it down to kernel mode? Um, 
So in that case, there is a small amount of hardware specific state in that image that would get loaded into hardware registers. And so a, basically a root process using that ioctal would, would be able to uh, basically infiltrate the hardware with potentially dangerous settings. That's, I guess, a good question for the CREO folks. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, hi. Um, this is Adrian. Um, I hope you can hear me and maybe see me also. <clears throat> so, um, first of all, I think this is very cool what you did here, um, especially because um, the Creo community has been ha has had requests how to interact with hardware devices like GPUs or InfiniBand, <clears throat> and our answer was always there's the possibility to write a plugin, but nobody did until you came along. So uh, this is this is really cool that you did it and. And um, I saw your, your demo, um, I think, last week for the XOR conference. So this uh, was, was really nice to see that, how it works. And it, it was really fast. It was dumping like five gigabytes. And it didn't take, take a long time. So um, I think this is really uh, impressive what you did here. Um, I think um, you said at some point you think that protobuf is slow for storing the memory content of the VRAM, right? Yes, slow as well as um, like I listed down as as the challenges that we face, especially yeah. when we encounter a huge buffer object in the VRAM. Let's say yeah. greater than four gigabytes in size, it it cannot. Okay. So my colleague you... was actually working on on making some optimizations there and okay. maybe using the raw files. Yeah. Have you seen? Yeah, right. Raw files. Have you seen how Creo manages um, memory uh, memory or the just the pages uh, file where all the memory from the process. The non-VRAM memory is there, and it's just a, uh, it's it's not a protobuf file. It's just a, a raw file with the um, memory pages of the process, right. and then there is a, a page map which tells Creo where to put which memory uh, content at which location. Have you seen that one? Right. Yeah. Yeah. They are like big but, files, two pages, one pages, two, and depends on like number of. Yeah, but is that that your idea? What you had for for making it uh, faster, the VRAM content on disk? Yeah. So David, do you want to share your yeah, idea? Yeah. About, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So so yeah. I mean, uh, we haven't uh, like uh, I've looked at the page maps. You know, not like super in detail, but yes, it's very similar. You know, we're looking at basically storing the contents with maybe some kind of ID for us to track where, you know, the contents of each GPU is going, but uh, the contents there would be in a raw file because, uh, you know, but the main issue was, we, you know, in protobuf there's a byte structure and uh, we have not been able to have a byte structure that's more than four gig. And, uh, you know, if you have a GPU that has uh, uh, basically, let's say 32 gigs of RAM, the, the, you know, we can have, uh, uh, buffers that, that can reach close to that size, right? So, so we would have to be able to reach uh, much bigger, let's say 32, maybe 64 gigs in the future. Yeah, but that sounds solvable, right? Yes, with, with a raw file. With yeah, a raw okay. file, yes, it is solvable. But we were just um, uh, maybe asking about, like, you know, whether exactly like uh, you guys uh, have been facing similar issues or, or you guys think of uh, maybe a different solution by just writing raw files? Yeah, I, I haven't been involved in that part um, which uh, wrote the pages uh, file, but um, there are a couple of people here um, who probably know this in detail and, and, and maybe they can, can help you or review what, what you're planning to do. And then I um, um, about what Felix said about checks for the for the for the images, or if there's a verification, what Creo puts into the hardware or into the uh, kernel. Um, I don't think there's any anything Creo does. Creo just takes what's in the image files and it believes that's correct and writes it. Um, until now, we we didn't write to any <laughs> any any um, I don't know GPU registers directly, so uh, I don't think there was any harm writing the data there. I don't know if, if writing wrong data to the GPU can, can break it. I, I hope not. But um, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing um, in Creo there. So if you need something, um, you probably have to think about it. 
Yeah, basically, I just wanted to know that is it safe to assume that those image files are always privileged uh, and, and only root can access and temper with them? Yeah, basically the question is what happens with the image files between taking the checkpoint and restoring it? Who has access to those image files? But I guess that's more a question to the system administrators, right? Yeah, that's, this depends on who writes the files and who copies them where. <laughs> So does, so does that mean that we need to implement some extra checks in the driver to basically make sure that our hardware state is sanitized before restore? Uh, I don't know. Uh, th let me ask one other question. So in the Creo images, um, I think there's other state in there that might have security implications. So I think you're restoring like privileges of processes. So yeah. someone messing with the images could elevate the, the privileges of a process, right? Yeah, I so would say so. When we dump and uh, when we dump and restore, so we're making use of Creo, obviously, we usually <clears throat> we make the assumption that uh, the directory that we're restoring from or the data that we have provided is in fact uh, intact and is in fact um, trusted. And I mean, the, the simplest way of ensuring this is essentially by uh, having a well-known directory that is only accessible by, by root or by privileged users, at least if you run, uh, if you run Creo as, as root. So we, for example, we don't, and, but this is very implementation specific. So sorry if this isn't really helpful, but essentially we have a location where we know, which is uh, where the container root of S and so on is also uh, stored. There is also a separate uh, directory where we essentially keep the state for a snapshot that's associated with the container. And that's where we we're store from. And that's the only part uh, that we trust. We don't allow users to, for example, give us a, a, a random location where the state of the container is located. Yeah. So in a complicated way of saying the application is responsible for uh, ensuring the integrity. So yeah, I, right, right now we are, we are running these Podman or let's say Docker containers with the sysadmin capabilities and root privileges. But I've like seen talks and, and read about rootless containers with Creo. So how does this situation uh, look like to you when we talk about rootless containers? Yeah, so I think um, this is <laughs> a complicated thing here. So we, two years ago, I think we introduced cap checkpoint restore, um, a capability to, to make this possible, but uh, we haven't, so we have it in the kernel, but we do not have it in Creo. So the idea is we could theoretically if we do it in Creo, we can some at some point have it in a container engine, but this is really far away. Um, but um, for for accessing a GPU is probably even more complicated than just a, a simple rootless container. So, and in the rootless case, just to clarify this real quick, what you mean by this is that it uh, even the container manager is uh, is unprivileged, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. So, okay. And Andre wants to say something. Andre, yes. come join us. Yeah. Uh, here we are, we are talking about CAP sysadmin, but if we are talking about rootless checkpoint restore, we actually introduced the CAP checkpoint restore, and you can use it to control uh, to check capabilities in your driver. Sure. Is there any example of uh, any any consumer using that capability yet? Like, do you know any consumer? I think you can grip in in the kernel. We have a few checks, and we have uh, no in the in, in the crew as a crew consumer or a crew client. So we have pull requests with all these changes, okay. uh, and there are a few changes requested, and we need to we need to just complete this pull request and merge it, and okay. when we will have it. Uh, when it will be merged, we were able to to set uh, file system capabilities for the crew binary, and then uh, use crew without. Uh, so, like uh, like any other binaries, like uh, sudo or right. like this, with file system capabilities. Right. Yeah, so thank you and, and thank you uh, Andre again for uh, your help on uh, like uh, this Jeep, the, the ID caching problem that we were discussing on the pull request. So I think uh, you already approved that change. Um, and that now leaves us to one more open question, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, huge image sizes. So like David mentioned earlier, uh, on a multi GPU system, you know, the, the total VRAM size can be of the order of few hundreds of gigabytes. So um, 
we haven't experimented yet with the deduplication and incremental checkpoints, um, but this is something that we would like to explore. Um, and if you have any feedbacks or any guidance here, how to do it effectively for external devices, or whether or not the current capabilities of deduplication and incremental checkpoint in CRU, are they enough for this type of work? Uh, we haven't really explored this in depth yet, but this is something we would like to hear from you if you have any guidance for us here. Um, yeah, I think the idea to use uh, predump it should help with minimize downtime. Right. Uh, but you you will need to to think how to implement uh, memory tracking for GPU devices. I think it will be. So does that mean we still checkpoint the whole like hundreds of uh, gigabytes of VRAM image every time we checkpoint, even though we want to make a, a memory tracking and incremental checkpoint using Creo? Yeah, for regular memory, we have uh, memory tracking, and we what what we are doing? We we freeze process for a short period of time just to get memory uh, page maps. Right. Then we resume processes and just uh, we are dumping memory in a background and all processes just continue working and everything. Uh, then we do another iteration. We uh, suspend process for a short period of time, get uh, page maps, but we this time we need to dump only the memory what have been changed from the previous iteration. So we have memory tracking and we know what memories, uh, what, what pages have been changed from the previous iteration. So we, we dump plus memory on the second iteration, then we do another iteration. And when we see, okay, this is enough, actually on each iteration, we, we need to dump more memory than on the previous iteration, for example. Then we do the full, full dump of all processes and resume them on another machine or just save a snapshot on the disk. For GPU, you, you can implement something like this. I, I don't know how. So the, the current Q implementation only knows about the splice available memory right in the pages file that we have. So that's where it is operating. So do you think that we need to uh, modify crew also to make this happen or this should be completely offloaded to the plugin i mean to do all the tracking for the vram and and such things or is this something that can also poss possibly uh, be extended to crew's current memory tracking uh, implementation like a different type of memory like a gpu memory not uh, normal system memory so the short answer is i don't know we will need to uh, we will need to investigate how how we can do this because right. right now, if I understand what's going on there, that we we don't integrate uh, GPU memory to the Creo main yeah. engine, right. how we don't memory. Right. And actually, I would like to. So I think the the whole process of dumping GPU it should be in a in a separate plugin. I think the choice to integrate this to the to the crew it should be just the last choice if we understand that it's impossible to do this in, in plugins. Got it. Okay. Sure. Because Thanks. right now we have uh, AMD GPUs in the future we will have NVIDIA GPUs and there are thousands of other devices so i i think plugins would be a good choice okay yeah sounds sounds reasonable to me yeah. but maybe a crazy idea that we just mark this page that it's like plugging a dumped page but please dump it in page uh, dumper of crew <laughs> it would be probably okay to like just mark this page that content should be dumped in uh, our uh, page server uh, way of dumping pages. Probably it's okay too. 
I think you you mean can we reuse some crypto? Integrate. Yeah. Yeah, we we can use uh, crew code. We can share some crew calls to plugins. It should be. Yeah, provide an API. Yeah. I think that's a good closing uh, closing remark. Um, thank you very much for that uh, talk and for the discussion. Um, I hope you received some input. Um, this was really interesting work. Um, thanks for doing this. And we are up for another break for about eight minutes. Uh, and we will be back um, at whatever it is in UTC. <laughs> um, it's, seven, uh, it's seven CEST here, so I don't know. Uh, full hour at least. Uh, and then we will continue with uh, Alexander's talk about alternative ways to... Sure, if, if I can just get one, one sure. quick minute here. So first of all, thank you everyone for listening and, and uh, big thanks to all the maintainers and, and the reviewers here. So uh, like, do you foresee any major bottleneck in, in, in at least one of our initial pull requests? Do you see still any uh, major uh, ask or requirement that we need to fulfill to make the first pull request where we are introducing these plugins and modifying crew? To be acceptable to you. So um, the first pull request um, is almost approved. So I think this is uh, pretty close to to being merged. Um, what what I want to mention here again, it's important that we somehow can include something in a in our CI run which tests this because once you're done. It will probably break at some point if we cannot CI test this. So, so if you have a chance to give us access to something with an AMD GPU, um, this would be important for the future, I guess. Uh, Felix, you want to respond to that? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so um, we are starting to talk to our DevOps team to see if we can have some kind of uh, server in a demilitarized zone that is accessible from outside to, for, for that kind of purpose. Um, I think it's definitely something we should be doing for um, the second pull request, which introduces the actual plugin and all that functionality. Uh, for the first plugin, I don't think it should be a gating factor, but I guess no, 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 kind of no, commitment no. from us that okay, we're really <laughs> serious about this. No, this was just um, I just wanted to mention it with um, enough time for you to act on. Yeah, for the definitely. first one, I don't, I don't see it as an important right. Yeah. And I, I definitely appreciate uh, that. That I mean, uh, we discussed this over emails. Basically, that that you're willing to take our plugin into your code base, and also that you're thinking about the CI problem, and then making sure you're not going to break us. So we definitely appreciate that. Uh, you are your help there. Yeah. Let me share my thoughts. As far as this uh, piece of code in a separate plugin, I. I don't think responsible for this code myself. So for me, it's, I think we can merge it without integration into our CI. But it is in your interest to, to have some tests and be sure that we will not break your functionality in the future. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, again. Yeah, thank you.